I'm going to share my screen. And if you guys can see it, I will go ahead and begin. All right. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Benjamin Kepner. I am the founder of Global Social Media Marketing. And uh, today's webinar, we're going to be hosted by Poster My Wall and Global Social Media Marketing. And the webinar for today is on Open for Business, Shine in the New Normal with Social Media. Our panel of social media expert for today's webinar is going to be myself, the CEO of Global Social Media Marketing, Buck Stein, the President and Chief Marketer of Drive Golf Marketing, and Samuel Gentry, the Marketing Manager of Denver Union Station. So shout out to all of our speakers for joining us today. So let's begin. So we are now in the age of the new normal in 2020. And so how do we get to know that new normal? Well, with social media, we saw that social media had record breaking social media usage around 44% between April and May. And that ad spend on Instagram stories increased by 70%, uh, almost a 10% of total Facebook ad spend increase. We also saw that e-commerce sales boomed in 2020, growing 76%. Finally, in the US alone, adults spent 25% of their mobile screen time on the following below. So we can see that people spent their time on things such as Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. And at the bottom of this image, we can see what does that new normal look like for your brand on social media? Well, number one, we need to adapt, right? Things have changed. Number two, we need to give back, right? There's people that are struggling. Right now is a great time to partner with other brands and business owners and look for more collaboration opportunities, as well as giving back to our communities that need our help the most. We need to create value, right? Value can be things such as education right now when people are looking for information or giving discounts to customers that you were trying to keep for the long term. We also need to try to switch this mindset to becoming essential, right? We saw many businesses that were shut down because they weren't considered essential. But how do we think about how to make our brand essential for our customers to continue to come back and buy our product or services? And finally, we need to listen, right? We need to listen to our employees. We need to listen to our customers. And we need to listen to the news because things are changing very rapidly. And right now, when things are in this stage of uncertainty, it's a really good idea to continue to listen to your customers and your employees so that you can create better relationships with them using social media. So what are some of these new normal pain points? I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys wanna just leave a comment on what types of pain points you're experiencing for your business or in this new normal, go ahead and leave some of those comments below as I walk through some of these. So for the customers, we see that customers feel the need to connect virtually due to closed, building and, closed buildings and now the need for safe convenience, right? So businesses have now moved and transitioned to online stores. We shared that stat on how e-commerce sales are pretty much booming right now as of this past summer. Things are moving to virtual events now instead of in person and we see an uptick in a lot of those delivery apps for e-commerce with many restaurants and retailers now needing to offer delivery options. We also see that customers feel the need to be safe. That includes, right, mass social distancing. We've seen in many states now that they have mandated masks and, you know, practicing safe options for those customers in their store, right? So for a business solution, we're seeing some of these restaurants or retail stores or buildings for that matter, limit capacity, hours, and redesign outdoor seating. Using social media to promote online reservations and delivery is also another good solution so that we can make sure that we are controlling things that are safe for our customers to be in the right environment. We also see that customers need to limit touching objects so that they can keep their hands clean, right? We've seen tons of hand sanitizers being produced by multiple companies and branding them. We see that a business solution that is now transpired out of that, I actually, funny enough, went to linger for any of my Denver, Colorado fans out there in this webinar today that they're actually using uh, cards instead of cash and they've moved their menus online providing a QR code at the table. 
So you actually, you go into the restaurant, it's no longer them handing you a menu. It's them giving you a code that you can take a quick snapshot on your phone and you can access your restaurant menu on your phone. We also see that providing gift cards is another good long-term option for maybe customers that aren't buying today, but might decide to come into your business or do something later that they can use and redeem later at another time. Finally, we see the need for social responsibility with based on recent events and all of the changing, moving things that are going on in an election year, we see that it's more important for small businesses right now to be supported in the community. And again, going back to having that value and you know providing partnerships with other businesses that, so that you can help one another during these times. So why should you use social media in the new normal? I'd also like to encourage again here, comments in the social media, and I'll pull up my phone after I go over this slide, just take a quick peek at some of those. What are you currently do with social media for your business, right? Are you using it um, in a matter that's growing your business, getting visibility, leads, or sales? Well, we found that during 2020, here's some of the three main trends that are coming out of social media in the new normal. Number one is building relationships with one-on-one -on -one messages, right? Right now is a really good time to continue to build those relationships with your customers that you can't often see in person right now. Number two, we know that there's an appointment scheduling option on your Facebook page for reservations, the marketplace, Instagram shopping, right? And that actually allows us to well, automate some of those processes and also be engaged with them to limit capacity and make sure that they feel safe. Finally, we see that there's less competition for ad spend right now. So we can actually find new customers very cost effectively. And that's for less than a dollar on Facebook or less than $2 YouTube sub campaigns. Looking at some of the comments here, um, they're just saying, thank you for having us. I don't see any, any relative pain points. So we'll just save those for later. And if it's something that you're doing in social media, we'll check back on those comments here in a little bit. So post for my wall, right? Post for my wall is one of the co-hosts for this today's webinar. So what is post for my wall? Post for my wall simplifies design. So anyone can create stunning graphics and videos without prior artistic skills. Post for My Wall also offers social media templates, including video, to make designing a breeze for small businesses, churches, sports, retail promotions, concerts, events, and more. Post for My Wall actually has over 2 million active users monthly, and they've got some really cool features that they're releasing in 2020 related to animation, so they can really have you stand out in your different types of communications. So, Definitely leave a comment below if you know who Post for My Wall is or if you're a current customer. We'd love to hear if you're using Post for My Wall and how you're using it. Here's an example of 135,000 plus different templates that Post for My Wall offers. You can turn these into different types of things such as social media graphics, to menus for your restaurant, to digital signage. Really, the possibilities are endless. And you can see that they've even got it templated out based on your different types of industries. Post for my wall to kind of go over what are their six main benefits that we're using them for here at Global Social Media Marketing is that we can see number one, that they are easy to use without design experience. It's multi-dimensional. It offers animations on social media, website, posters, SMS, emails, and etc. We know that it's very budget friendly. We also see that Post For My Wall creates menus and schedules. It's also used for consistent branding with custom fonts, and it's a hassle-free collaboration for your team. So definitely, if you have any ideas on how you're using Post For My Wall to share it with everybody else that's on the webinar, please leave a comment of how you're using your Post For My Wall. Also, I have noticed there's a little, little bit of feedback in the video today. So if you can, please remember to just mute yourself and we will save time at the end of the conversation for questions at the end. So here's an example of some of the different types of templates that we've created at Global using Post For My Wall. You can see that we've got an example of reopening 
for a business, right? That was one example that you could use Postmark Wall. And another example that we're showing here is an example of how to actually promote your safe, comfortable outdoor seating for your restaurant, right? We know that outdoor seating is, is one of those new measures where you're trying to have to adapt, right? And provide value to your local community so that they feel safe at your restaurant. So here's an example of a post that we created for restaurants that they could use to run a special or to provide an incentive to encourage people to attend their restaurant in a safe environment. So moving on, we're gonna start with some of the features here now that Instagram released in 2020. Some of those new features that Instagram Live is now offering include things such as paid badges and Instagram Live videos. We saw a huge surge in live videos in general in social media right after the pandemic broke out around middle of March, right? We saw a huge spike in Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and YouTube Live. And Instagram noticed that. They decided to offer a paid badges option on Instagram Live, where now, as you can see on the left-hand side, an example of somebody doing a workout online, and they can actually pay their fitness trainer or engage with them through these new additional um, badges that you can see right here on the right-hand side, these little badges that are coming out. Those are now options to support your favorite creators and stand out in comments. Also on the right-hand side, we can see an example of the Instagram TV ads. Think of Instagram TV as just another option like every other social media platform is going to, right? We know that all of the social media platforms that are being mentioned in this presentation, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, they all have moved into TV options because people are consuming video and entertainment just as much on social media as they are on television these days. We saw a huge explosion in Hulu and Sting, and it only makes sense for Instagram to create, start creating ads for their TV ads. This will be slowly rolling out gradually, so don't worry if you don't have all the features yet, but these are the things that are kind of recent within the last month or two. We can also see that Instagram shopping is a new feature that now, if you're a retailer or a restaurant, you don't even need to have an actual website anymore. You can use social media and you can use your Instagram shops. You can use your Facebook shops. These are beautiful places to build immersive storefronts for your business. You can see an example on the left-hand sign here for Jasper's Boutique that actually allows you to tag the price range of the different types of clothes that you might be featuring for a given model. And it allows you to view insights on how people interact with your shopping content that you might not be able to do within your in-person store or on your website. Next, we see that Instagram really decided to feature their stories more with this more interactive story sticker features. And this is because we know that the number one piece of content on Instagram today is Instagram stories. In 2020, we see that over 50 to 100 million Instagram stories are uploaded every day, no matter what day of the year. And when those stories are uploaded, that there are abilities for you to use stickers. We can mention a location or we can donate to somebody. It being an election year, there's a lot of people that are now voting and we can make interactive gifts or polls so that we can get customer feedback from our customers directly. So here's an, just a brief run through some of those different types of stickers that they have kind of mentioned. And then also I wanted to show you an example of what an Instagram ad would look like if you have a given product. Recently at Global Social Media Marketing, we've released an ebook and published it on Amazon on how to become a YouTuber. And this was an example of an ad campaign that we ran just before the, today's upcoming webinar. And you can see the engagement that we got, guys, right? This is actually less than $40 it cost us to reach over 5,000 people and get 1,000 engagements, right? Imagine if you were able to get for $40, for $40 1,000 people to engage with your product. There's definitely a sure chance there that at least you're going to get maybe one to five customers there from 1,000 people. And you can build that viralness of your campaign. So this is what it looks like on mobile. You can actually click on shop now and it would take you to Amazon. So for any retailers that have Amazon stores or if you're selling from your website, just know that all of your Instagram 
ads can feature your products to encourage e-commerce sales. Finally, on Instagram, I wanted to briefly cover some different types of collaboration opportunities. I know that we have set up this webinar to make sure that we can offer businesses that are attending or viewers that are watching this today how to collaborate with other businesses. I think that's so important in 2020. And here's two examples. Number one here on the right is for one of our clients at Global Social Media Marketing. His name is Chris Murphy, and he's in the music industry. Our hearts go out to all the musicians and artists out there that have been struggling in the new normal with music venues being closed and new restrictions. So we were thinking with Chris, how can we help Chris? One of the ideas that came out of this is to do Instagram takeovers. If you're a musician or an artist, think about what products do you use to make your artwork? Is it a painting brush or in Chris's example, is it strings on his violin? Reach out to a company that's producing those products and offer to do an Instagram takeover. That's exactly what Chris did. He went to Crut Strings. He said, I'll do some free music for you if you'll allow me to put some posts on your page or do an Instagram story feature. It was very successful from what I heard from Chris and he got a ton of content and reached a whole new audience especially when he's struggling right now to be able to play in person from people that he already knows that are interested in music because they're buying music products. Another example that we have here on the left is with Anne Bernard. Shout out to her. She is an amazing podcaster and was actually at the Global Podcast Fest. And what we did with her is also just another co-branded collaboration opportunity where podcasting is exploding right now. I know that in person is struggling. So think about in your given vertical or industry, who can I do a podcast with? Can I do it with another business owner? You can even search social media for podcast speakers or podcast guests and do a co-branded collaboration post like this so that you're reaching those new audiences. So these are really some cool ideas that we were able to create during this new normal with Instagram collaborations. Moving on to Facebook. Right? Facebook, as I had mentioned, is very cost effective in 2020 due to the fact that there is less people paying to play. With Facebook, we know that you do have to pay to play. We've got some awesome things that are going to come up here in the webinar shortly about some free strategies that you can implement. We know if you're trying to take social media seriously that you do need to have a small advertising budget. We also know that the average small business owner is spending around $500 a month on Facebook ads. So that kind of gives you a benchmark for what we're seeing. And here's an example of a travel company that we worked with at the Travel Savings Network and our client of Mike. Here's an example of an ad that we ran here on the right-hand side where we're just doing a very simple call to action to like our page to build brand awareness, right? We know that travel was one industry that was turned upside down and customers we're very scared to travel in this new normal, especially with all of the travel bans and restrictions and the new you know, mask wearing laws within the given airports and airlines. We know that that was a pain point. So we actually flipped on its head and said, hey, we know that times are tough. We're gonna provide a historically cheap deal to you so that you can book it now and saved later. So we actually kind of dreamscaped. You can see this has got a nice cocktail image. It's by the pool. It was in the summer. We used emojis, right? Everything about this ad, the reason why it was able to produce that 38 cents per like is because the copy was relevant to the given customer that had those pain points. And we were using a really nice dreamscape image. It's a bright image, right? And we're also kind of connecting travel and food. So. For any of the restaurant people that are attending the webinar today, I would say take this as an example of thinking about the pain points that customers have in your given restaurant and remembering to use really bright images that have strong call, call to actions. And this is the campaign, by the way, that we ran for the United States and Canada travelers based on traveler interests. You can see all different types of comments that we were able to produce for that. Moving on, I wanted to show another example of Facebook like ads campaigns. This is with our Waste Connections of Colorado, and we actually decided to do some campaigns in Spanish. So I'm fluent in Spanish. I would not recommend trying to directly translate these on Google Translate. I would recommend working with a native Spanish speaker or trying to hire a translator. 
But in our case, unable to speak Spanish, was able to write that copy. If you want to take screenshots of this from the webinar today, go ahead and do that. But the other cool thing outside of the Spanish copy and appealing to a Spanish speaking audience that lives in Colorado, right? We knew that Colorado has almost a 40% Hispanic population. And that was a huge audience that we could expand and reach out to, to continue to build the Waste Connection brand at a local level. But we also knew that sports fans are fanatical on social media, right? So with the MLB opening back up and the NBA opening back up, we know that they're also going through their new normal of restrictions, testings, their bubbles. And we want to connect with fans because fans haven't lost that passion, just like travelers haven't lost that passion either. And kind of hitting the right relevancy and saying, we know that baseball's opening back up. Please like our page to follow along with us during the new Rocky season in this new normal. And this actually worked really well. We were getting likes here again at half of the price of what we were getting it in English at around 60 cents in comparison with almost a dollar. Visibility. I know that's a pain point for many people in this webinar or people that are watching in social media. We'd love to hear in the comments, how are you get, getting visibility right now for your restaurant? Are you doing ad campaigns? Are you doing collaboration posts? Um, let us know in the comments, leave a comment. Anyways, for us, what we did with Post From My Wall, which is really exciting, is we created a co-hosted Facebook event. Co-hosted Facebook events, as you can see right here on the left-hand side, are allowing you to partner with another page. So think of it again as doing playing into a new audience. We use pretty simple copy, right? Where we're saying exactly what the event's about, when is it gonna happen, what's the goal of it, and how to register. This image here at the bottom, again, if we look at why this performs so well in the ad campaign that we ran, is it's a bright image. It stands out in your newsfeed and it's kind of playing off of that shining new normal, right? So we could see all the engagement that I got. And right here at the bottom are actually the results of this ad campaign for everyone that we've promoted for this webinar, right? So we spent $182 to actually generate over 448 event responses and reach over 130,000 people for a cost per result of 41 cents per event, guys. These are the results of our Facebook event campaign co-hosted with Post From Our Wall. We were able to reach over 150,000 people. We can see that not everyone said that they were going, but we got huge interest and a lot of visibility for this, right? I mean, $150,000, I mean, excuse me, 150,000 reach. And we didn't even spend more than $500 on the total of this campaign. So, you know, I don't know how many channels exist out there where you're going to be able to get this visibility, especially when people are spending more time on Facebook and accessing it on their mobile phone every day. This is a great solution. So my recommendation for anyone that you know, is looking to come up with visibility ideas, reach out to other businesses, reach out to other people to do online things like this, like virtual events, and that will really help you be able to get more visibility. The other cool feature with Facebook events is that you can actually invite up to 500 of your given Facebook friends. So I did that, we did ads on top of that. One final pro tip I'll give you that I don't mention in the actual slides of this presentation is you can also now create LinkedIn event pages. We had over 1,300 people actually RSVP on LinkedIn. So shout outs to any of those people. And we have that as a public list available. And all we did there too is actually invite our LinkedIn connections. So I was able to go into my 13,000 LinkedIn event, uh, LinkedIn connections, invite to them to the event. And now we had almost 1,400 people RSVP and that was all free guys. So look at events as really good opportunities to co-host events with people and get visibility for your brand. Moving on to leads, we know that businesses and business owners care a lot about bottom line revenue, leads, and sales. Here's an example again with our travel client that we worked with at the Travel Savings Network. And you can see even amidst this new normal of consumers being scared to travel, that we were actually able to generate 315 leads at a cost per lead of $1.34. What was really interesting when we ran these lead campaigns, you can see again on the right-hand side, the example of the exact ad that we ran is the best performing. It's dreamscaping again, right? It's got a nice bright image. It's near the water. We've got a nice cocktail drink of actually imagining ourselves there. And again, we're hitting that pain point immediately of, hey, are you going crazy at home in your quarantine? 
Are you ready to escape once Trump bans are lifted? So we're thinking again about the future. We know that people are going to travel again eventually. So thinking about the future. And we we're actually able to generate tons of leads to their call center so that they can also handle those concerns. So I know we had a lot of people on LinkedIn and we've got Sam talking a little bit about the hotel and travel space as well today in the webinar. But what I would say for anybody in the travel industry is, is that a lot of customers from the ads that we ran on Facebook are giving this feedback that they do actually like to talk to somebody on the phone and a travel agent or a sales manager right now because they're scared right now. They don't know if it's the travel. So my advice for people in the travel industry space is run a lead ad that gets their contact information and then get, the, get on the phone with them and, and kind of guide them through and make sure that they feel confident and safe in this new travel environment. Finally, for Facebook, I want to briefly mention our Facebook message chatbot solution that we discovered during 2020. We actually did a corporate market research project for Waste Connections and delivered it to them after analyzing all of the back end of their Facebook messages. Funny enough, the trash management industry was also flipped upside down. Because restaurants were closed, it meant more people were spending time at home and therefore producing more trash. So routes needed to be changed. New service features or ability to have different driver paths for waste connections got created. And it actually led to a huge uptick in customer, customer service messages. So we took those messages and our digital marketing manager of the Sean and Evelyn, and they put it into this amazing market research report and actually were able to say, we can use a chatbot solution to improve the response time and help the customer service department. And we can do that all through ManyChat. I'm not gonna play the video in today's presentation, but I am gonna include it in the presentation that we're gonna send so you can watch it later. For any restaurants or retail shops, a really good use case of using a Facebook chatbot solution would be to offer promo codes. You could think of chatbot solutions as a more direct one-to-one -one message option where you can build relationships with your customers closer. And you can look at it as a way to build your email subscriber list. How awesome would it be to run a Facebook Messenger ad campaign and pay $10 a month to have an automated chatbot that qualifies those leads and provides value to your customers so that you can continue to be engaged with them and provide value. This was also finally a partnership that we completed this year as a social media company with ManyChat. We'll be looking to offer that to other businesses that are interested in using chatbot solutions. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to Buck Stein's section. So Buck, if, if you're there, I'm gonna let you take it away. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. How's everybody doing this afternoon? All right. So uh, greetings from Amen Corner. Uh, no, I'm not really there. I'm not really in Augusta, Georgia. There, People can't even go to that event this year, right? Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Buck Stein. I'm the president, chief marketer, drive golf marketing. Um, I'm a 20-year veteran in the golf industry of both management and uh, marketing as well. And uh, been a marketer most of my life as well, too. So uh, we've been in so kind of the same boat as everybody else for that. This We had to do damage control just like anyone else. The difference with golf was we learned really quickly that we're in a unique position where it can be done safely. So we had folks coming out to visit us after initial everything happened with COVID, everything else as well here. So, so we had to say, okay, you know, what, what can we do with this case? There's some people wanting to play golf but they're not really sure if they should be or if they should be leaving their homes or if, if this is safe or anything else. And so uh, one of the first things that we did was put together a series of video campaigns. Uh, you can see some of the examples down here on the screen, uh, but the, the idea was uh, they should be raw. They should be uncut. They should be from the cell phones of the employees and the managers on the property. So we had food and beverage, maintenance, general manager, chef, head pro, everybody, doing videos from their perspective departments saying, this is what we're doing every day to, to keep you safe out here. This is what we're doing every day. Contactless check-in. Uh, you see the, the covers and gators and everything else and food and beverage and now gloves and everything else for everyone there too. They took the opportunity to remodel one of the restaurants while they were closed. The moral of the story here was this is a, this is, they had over 6 
thousand video views in one week with these videos. Now this is on a page that only has about 3000 followers. So that's, that's a really big deal for them. The middle one, the remodel of the, the restaurant in particular had over 1.5 thousand views alone in that first week. Keep in mind for all this, these are unpaid engagements for us. Next slide, please. So contrary to popular belief, uh, uh, marketing, uh, golf courses, uh, is, is not, we don't have huge marketing budgets for, for golf courses. We're like a lot of you out there. We're small businesses. In fact, 90% of the golf courses are small businesses, one-off owners. Like I guess a lot of you out there as well too, using, you know, great tools like poster my wall. And they're so great for us as small businesses. And so when we're doing campaigns like this, we don't have thousands or even hundreds of dollars sometimes to throw at campaigns of this caliber. And so that's why we said, what can we do for engagement uh, in the golf business? Like with restaurants, special events, concert venues, all those kinds of things, it, you know, leading up to those events or getting people excited about it. Engagement is what we do as well. So the reason for those videos was to say, okay, we have to start by re-engaging our core customers? How do we get the people that, that come back and visit us every week? Again, like, like restaurant business, you may have a couple hundred people that are your core customers that come to visit you every week or every month. And they're, they're what keep a lot of us afloat. Same goes in the golf business as well. There's a lot of parallels in there. And so we had to say, okay, number one, priority one, how do we get those people to come back? And it was, it was consumer confidence. It was getting people to feel comfortable coming back to the golf course, knowing what, what was going on and what was going to, that it was going to be safe for them. We have, we have dividers on the golf carts now at a lot of these courses, contactless check-in where they're circumventing the clubhouse um, altogether, which creates a different set of problems for the food and beverage department, but it's a, it's exactly that. It's a completely different topic. Um, so all those different things, but since you can play golf and you can go out uh, for two, three, four hours with just a couple of people that you either live with or rode over with. So people feel safe in the COVID environment that they were doing that. So we had to get those folks back first of all. Uh, and, and secondly, we wanted to try and reach out to those people that, only golf once a year, once a quarter, golf with dad on Father's Day kind of thing. But like anybody that's a sports nut and you can't play basketball, you can't play any team sports right now. You couldn't even watch them on TV at the beginning. Uh, golf became more popular really fast and, and still has kind of gone through that trend for the summertime. So with this video campaign, you can see there it, it, it achieved exactly what we were looking for. Uh, Facebook splits these off in a couple different categories. You can see the peaks and valleys when a video got posted, um, but they split this up into uh, people that viewed more of the video. Five, they had 5,000 minutes viewed of people that viewed those videos long term, and then over 18,000 uh, of the uh, three second video views, which Facebook splits into the people that aren't really the engagers. They just kind of saw it was a video or it might've came across in their watch feed. So they started watching it, but they didn't want to watch the whole thing. Uh, the key takeaway there is make sure that your text is important in your post. When you have that video, there's also going to be a text in there, whether it's what was going on in that video or a call to action with something uh, going on uh, at your at your venue or at your restaurant. So at the very least, even if they're just reading that, they even if they're just seeing a couple seconds of the video, they're reading out of the corner of their eye what your text was as well too. So it was important to have that uh, in, in there. So, so we needed the customers to feel safe in the environment and, and it really was just the constant updates from somebody they knew. The reason for going across all those different departments and the golf course uh, would be the same section as a restaurant somewhere else to have a hostess doing it, to have uh, a chef doing it, to have a, a couple of waiters and bartenders doing it in hopes that if they go visit your business or if they have visited your business in the past, they've interacted with, with, with one of those staff members before. So it's like, hey, there's Steve, my favorite bartender. Uh, oh, that's good to see he's safe and he's working. We should go visit Steve. And it kind of tugs on the heartstrings. Again, this was a completely unpaid campaign. Next slide, please. So let's touch on uh, Sam Kane, some campaigns that we did. Um, 
we had, of course, uh, over in the Tampa area, we're based in Florida. So a lot of our clients, especially in golf, are here in the Florida area that had a really uh, awesome Black Friday sales event uh, last year in 2019. We really uh, kicked it up a notch for them over 2018 when they did $1,000 in sales. So a thousand percent increase in sales year over year that now this is all pre COVID stuff. So so why am I bringing it up? I'm bringing it up because just like a lot of you may have tried or experienced in the restaurant business, and I encourage you to keep trying over the summer, uh, is we said, okay, let's try another campaign for this. Let's do some online sales for this course, selling gift cards or 10 play cards. So obviously right in the middle of all this uh, was uh, Father's Day, which is a huge uh, golfing holiday. It's a big holiday for us. Uh, depending on the market that these are in though, not necessarily a big one where they do a lot of online sales, but we said, you know what? We need to try this at this course. They built a little bit of an e-commerce following. We've done a good job over the last two years building that for them. So let's try this. So again, um, through a campaign that was cost us next to nothing. In most case, we spent $0 on it. Uh, we, we used a series of email campaigns. Uh, email is very much so not dead. If you're not using it at your, at your location or attraction or restaurant, whatever you do for your business or service, uh, you, you're still missing out because there's a piece of business to be said in that. It's great to be in their pocket and to use text message, everything else, but email still is a big piece of this market. The biggest reason to use it so strongly in this campaign was, again, we wanted to reach the highest engagers, the people that visited the courses, played there the most, ate the food the most there, have, have been an established customer, took, took part in those previous Black Friday sales and said exactly that. You know, we weren't closed for long, like a lot of places were. Some didn't even close at all. But we wanted to say, hey, when you feel comfortable coming back, we're going to be there. We've made them feel confident that we're not going to close next month and then buy a gift card, buy a 10 play card, come back and use it. So this course, which did no Father's Day online campaign the previous year, did over $5,500 in Father's Day uh, e-commerce sales this year. That's in 10 play cards, in, in uh, gift cards, things that are almost pure profit, especially when it, it comes to the golf. And you can see on screen there what we did. We literally did a series of four emails over the course of the month. We did a series of about four Facebook posts. And we also have uh, proprietary apps that we use uh, for the golf courses. So we did a couple push notifications. We had a little bit in their, in their pocket for that as well too. And you can see uh, where the open rates were um, they had uh, an average of 14, over 14% open rate on these emails. This is a course that has a database of about 10,000 uh, golfers and food patrons. Um, a mix of customers in there, about 25 or so percent are actually from uh, the frozen north or from Canada up there that only visit them once a year. So not all were local, but some of those guys even said, hey, I'm not going to see you again till February, hopefully, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and buy a, a gift card because I want to support the club as well, too. Uh, to put this into perspective, how much is $5,000 for a golf course like this? This is a golf course that is lucky to do 10,000 or so dollars in sales in an entire month for, for retail merchandise and gift cards. And so over $5,000 with what's going on right now is a huge uh, shot in the arm uh, for them as well too. Next slide, please. So let's get animated. I'm, I'm told already that I am kind of animated when I present, but let's really get animated. Um, uh, I will be the poster my wall poster boy because I love their service and I, and, and I use it a whole lot. Those guys know that. Um, they started really going hot and heavy with animated gifts and being allowed to use those or giving lots of ways to use those last year. Uh, we started, we came right out of the gate uh, using those as well. Um, you can see some of our examples here because we do a lot of kinds, different kinds of things. Uh, but if you guys haven't ex experimented with this in Poster on My Wall, it is awesome. You can replace any stationary image using either stock video or, or video that you have that you upload. Um, so we started doing these right away, whether it was the Friday night live entertainment at one of the restaurants, uh, Glow Golf, which is a lot of fun. Uh, one of our courses has a pool, so they're selling pool passes and uh, even advertisement for agronomic services from one of our parent companies that we work with. Just by using that little bit of animation, whether it's a longer video for Facebook or a short animated GIF, uh, right away engagement uh, goes up with these. Um, if you don't have an email client that can support the animated gifts, I suggest you get one right away. But just using a three, four, five second animated GIF, it gets more 
attention from people. We, we saw our open rates increase an average of 5% uh, almost overnight for every email we were sending with animated GIFs versus ones we were still sending with, with stationary uh, uh, backgrounds on all the flyers. Facebook, we saw over 20% organic reach uh, to our customers just because like they've, you've heard over and over again, vi you know, video is king with Facebook. They, all their algorithms and get as deep as you want. But you know, one simple rule is if you post a video over uh, an image, you're going to get more engagement. Well, you don't have to go super deep, you can literally just put an animated background on your flyer and you're going to get more engagement for those as well. Um, we also saw, and this is talking back in the fall and summer of last year, but we also saw an initial uh, increase in event participation as well too. So not only was it reaching more people, it was reaching prevalent people that were interested in those events. And that even increased into, into I mean, that even uh, held true into a COVID era when uh, uh, events fall off and didn't happen for a little bit, but then they started to come back pretty quick, especially at some of of our, our golf courses just with some of the new uh, safety precautions uh, in, in place as well. Next slide for me, please. So along that, uh, that same vein, again, uh, a campaign that we did using the animation. And again, I can't, I can't preach enough if you're a restaurant or you know concert venues once we get to start opening again man do i love i miss my live music um we had a business a client of ours actually that i work with really closely that's a subscription box a little outside of the golf realm but friends of ours um that we did a six month campaign with from january to give or take june so this started when everything was slightly more normal and went all through that culminating in the middle of it with a concert which you know thankfully we were still able to have happened uh, early in Ma uh, uh, march so this was a six month campaign uh it was engagement focused spend we were trying to get landing page views we were trying to get them you know through the facebook funnel to the business's actual landing pages it's, it's a subscription box and so part of it was uh pushing you know what they have for the product but the biggest push for the first three months was the concert they were having a fifth anniversary party uh for their business and uh pushing to that to giving away some free tickets uh to the event uh, in orlando florida which is close to where we're based and uh trying to engage both new and current customers as well in there too so you can see what we did um it was about a 500 a month spend so they did spend about three thousand dollars over the course of the six months there was a, a considerable spend in there especially like uh, ben was bringing up early from a small business perspective uh but the result was uh killer uh, they had uh, over 25,000 landing page views from that, over a half a million people reached uh, for a $3,000 spend. So that was a 12 cent cost per result. So that was pretty awesome for that. But let the dollars and cents speak for themselves. It directly resulted in an, an additional $21,000 in sales. And that was in the first month. And so keep in mind in, in this case, you know, even more so than a restaurant or some of the other of us where we're looking for repeat customers, this subscription box, they had a 93% retention rate with those customers. So not only was the, the immediate ROI heads and shoulders above the $3,000 that they spent, but it also had a really high retention rate. And so again, a lot of this really just based around the fact that you don't even have to go, you know, be the, the crazy videographer to, to go with video in your social media campaigns. Something as simple as these animated backgrounds to make gifts and videos that that is already going a long way for a lot of you. And so, like, again, in the, in the restaurant business, which there are a lot of parallels and a lot of our golf courses have restaurants as well. We're promoting those kinds of events, you know, whether it's a dinner and a show or, or, or a, a, a live music Friday night. And so sometimes it's not necessarily having to be a video editor and, and take lots of video and splice it together to do that when you're just talking about wanting to reach that engagement on Facebook, uh, the animated flyers and, and some of those things, that's just uh, really where it's at. So uh, that's it for me, guys. I'd really love to see any questions as, as well there. And too, if you have any questions for me, I I'm happy to answer them. Awesome. Great. Yeah, definitely feel free. Anybody that's watching, uh, leave some comments for Buck. How are you using animational videos? Where do you struggle on making really cool looking videos? Like he's shown us an example, we'd love to hear. All right, so we are gonna move on now to Sam and I'm gonna let Sam kind of lead the way here. So Sam, are you there? Thanks Benjamin, appreciate it. Hey everyone, my name is Sam Gentry. I am the marketing manager for Denver Union Station. For those outside of Colorado, Denver Union Station is the historic train station located in Denver, Colorado. 
Uh, it was built in 1881, uh, but revitalized in 2014 into not only a sprawling urban transit hub, uh, but hosts an array of chef-driven restaurants, local retail, drinks, cocktails, and a hotel. Um, so our marketing department works closely with all of our tenants, obviously, to optimize their efforts and what they're doing. Um, but then we also build out our own activations. We have a 12,000 square foot great hall that we utilize um, for a lot of our efforts. So we were hit pretty hard by COVID, as I'm sure most of you were. You know, the bustling and high energy aspects of our brand doesn't necessarily resonate well during a pandemic. Uh, so we've had to reapproach a lot of our business practices and uh, figure out what works, what doesn't work. So I'm gonna, my slides are gonna kind of touch on just the things we've done this summer, what we've learned, what we're implementing going forward. Uh, so the three things that I'm going to touch on are the importance of being informative, uh, both in your copy and your visuals, showing clear value in your brand and getting creative. Uh, so jumping right in, Benjamin, next slide, please. Yeah, so the importance of uh, keeping your content and visuals informative, um, you know, it goes without saying, you know, it's important to say what you're doing, but I also am a firm believer in showing what you're doing. Um, you know, Buck touched on this as well as having, you know, his employees uh, post those videos, you know, that's a lot of what we're implementing as well. Um, you know, we've, you know, really had to go back to the drawing board with a lot of our visuals and what we're promoting. So as soon as we kind of came out of that lockdown, um, really starting to build up new creative content, um, showing socially distant spaces, people wearing masks, employees wearing masks, customers wearing masks. Um, so that was really big for us um, right out of the gate. Um, you know, not only does it provide your demographic with uh, essential info, but it bolsters the trust that they have with your brand. Um, so some of the visuals I'm showcasing here are just uh, our COVID response um, posts, uh, which we found to perform um, quite a bit more than our average posts, which uh, was always uh, good to see. Uh, Benjamin, next slide, please. Uh, Benjamin, next slide, please. Yeah, I think it's uh, on next slide. Can you see it? The oh, yeah, box? sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I just, might just have a bit of a lag. Thanks. Um, yeah, yeah so with our tenants specifically, you know, showing what they're doing during this pandemic, uh, you'll see some examples there. We have, you know, uh, Terminal Bar, their outdoor bar setup, what that looks like a mass bar so you're making a drink for a mass customer. Um, showing the contactless uh, delivery system that we have in our coffee shop. So people order online, go and pick it up directly from the coffee shop, no interaction with uh, the employees, just grab their coffee and go. Um, and then if you are looking for a more intimate experience, our you know, cocktail lounge showing the uh, cocktail presentation done by uh, a Cooper Lounge staff member. So again, it's just really important to uh, be cognizant of, you know, what's going on in the climate and constantly reevaluating and making sure that whatever you're putting out there is sensitive and you know timely with what you're doing. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. Love that picture of Yoda there with the social distance. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was for a uh, Star Wars Day made of force. So the whole thing was, you know, the force the force supports social distancing. So that was a fun little engaging piece that we did for the bar. Um, yeah, we always yeah. get get a kick out of doing Star Wars theme posts for May the 4th and those always perform well. Just a little little fun distraction from <laughs> the general what's going on. Uh, the second thing you know that we've uh, really learned during this process is the value uh, value driven messaging. Um, value is king. Um, more Now more than ever with 30 million people unemployed, uh, people just aren't spending what they used to. Um, which can present a lot of challenges for restaurants, especially higher one, higher end ones. Um, the case study I wanted to kind of go over here was our hotel specifically, the Crawford Hotel, which is located in Union Station, 112 room hotel, but it is branded as a luxury hotel, which presents a lot of challenges, obviously during um, what's going on. So email campaign is a big part of what we do for the Crawford Hotel. Uh, so I wanted to kind of compare some of the email campaigns that we've done this summer which was really interesting. Um, you know, when COVID, when we were first starting to crawl out of COVID, uh, the email campaign focus was, okay, like, how can we highlight, you know, different amenities? How can we enhance the experience? We uh, had this whole private concert series where we had a musician go to each hotel floor and do a private concert for the guests, which was really cool, but it didn't drive a lot of uh, room nights or revenue. 
But then in July and August, we started focusing our campaigns more on very explicit value-driven messaging. So, you know, buy one night, get 25% off. Buy three nights, get 50% off. Uh, so really explicitly showing, hey, when you're staying with us, you are saving money. Um, so something that we saw with that, just comparing the value-driven email campaigns, we saw 146% increase in room night bookings, uh, a 270% in overall room nights, and a 275% jump in revenue just looking at email campaigns. So that was really cool to see. And that's very much a focus, you know, going forward, like, how can we continue to show value in what we're doing? I mean, just being cognizant of the current situation, 30 million people unemployed, um, the people that are employed, you know, they're not necessarily on stable ground and they're still looking to save money. So providing an experience, but understanding that, you know, there is, uh, you know, your demographic is going to be a lot more value conscious than might have been in the past. Um, next slide, please. Awesome. Yeah. And anyone in the comments, please leave a, a comment for Sam and let us know, have you been to Union Station? Have you been to Crawford Hotel? I'm sure we'd love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So the last piece, you know, getting creative. I think the biggest thing that we've all learned and, you know, the biggest joke we make here is there isn't a playbook for how to navigate social media or marketing during the pandemic. We're all learning as we go. Um, that's where I think things like this webinar are so valuable just to get together and hear what, you know, what you're doing, what I'm doing, um, what's working, what's not working. You know, there isn't a one size fits all, but I think it's so valuable to share these experiences. Um, so with getting creative in mind, um, when we came out of lockdown, obviously our big focus was how do we bolster our outdoor experience? Um, you know, like I mentioned, we have a 12,000 foot square foot great hall that's indoors, but there was then and very much still is, you know, there's still a stigma or a hesitancy for guests to um, enjoy public indoor spaces um, outside of a grocery store. Uh, so really sort of, sorry, sort of highlighting those experiences. Um, so we uh, had a huge effort in extending our patios as much as we could. We're very grateful that we have an outdoor plaza area that we're able to kind of manipulate and um, provide extended patio services for all of our restaurants. Um, so we're very lucky. I know some restaurants haven't been as fortunate to be able to capitalize on that, but it's been night and day in terms of the experience that we're providing and the revenue that we're uh, driving to our tenants. Um, we had one uh, concept that didn't have an existing patio service and didn't have the option to extend. So what we did is we created a pop-up bar experience from the Cooper Lounge, uh, which is located on the mezzanine of Denver Union Station. So right now, um, through the summer, they have a pop-up tiki bar called Oasis. Um, living outside of the Union Station that has been a lot of fun to promote. People love Tiki Dreams. They're vibrant. They're colorful. Um, so we're seeing a lot of great engagement from promoting that. Um, as we kind of wind down in summer and start looking at Q4, you know, the unfortunate reality is the patty season is ending. So, you know, on our mind right now is what's the next step and how can we um, create experiences that can adapt to whatever uh, COVID is going to throw at us. Um, so two things that we're really focusing on in our plans going forward, um, first and foremost, is focusing on community partnerships. You know, we're all struggling. I think from what you're hearing here is, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. Let's find ways to partner with the community. I've also found that those seem to resonate more from a PR standpoint as well, when you can kind of find initiatives to piggyback off of with another organization. Uh, so something that we are very close to Launching actually is a social media campaign. That's a partnership with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. They have a really cool um, art exhibit called The Art of the Brick going on with uh, the world-renowned Lego artist, Nathan Sawa. Um, so what we will be doing is a social campaign that'll live on Instagram called Lego This Station, where we encourage guests to build Union Station exclusively out of Lego bricks and then post uh, their creations on Instagram using a hashtag and tagging us. Um, and then after our allotted period of time, we'll uh, gather a list of nominees and then uh, the world renowned uh, Lego artist Nathan Sawa will actually choose the winner. Uh, this Lego piece will live within Union Station and uh, the uh, winning artist will uh, receive an overnight stay at the Crawford Hotel. So a lot of touch points there, a lot of different um, partnerships involved there, but ultimately just trying to drive up social engagement, especially uh, for, you know, audience members who maybe aren't as willing or don't feel quite comfortable yet going out um, into public spaces. So helping them find ways to get involved. 
Uh, the other thing that we're actually launching tomorrow, which is exciting, we started a passport program um, exclusively for Denver Union Station. So uh, again, going back to value-driven messaging, this passport um, has exclusive one-time offers at all of our tenants. They're all really cool offers. Um, Cooper Lounge has a buy one, get one at Old Fashioned. Uh, Mercantile, which is a really nice restaurant, has 50% off your entire tab. Uh, so being able to provide these exclusive offers to guests that not only incentivizes people to come and enjoy our space safely, but encourages repeat visits. Um, we're really excited to launch this. I wish I could share numbers on whether or not it's been successful, um, but again, we're launching this tomorrow. Um, but I didn't want to share it because I think it's a cool thing that we are initiating. Um, so yeah, that's all for me, guys. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions, especially from a restaurant or hotel perspective, just from our experiences with working with the Denver community and what's worked, what hasn't, and you know what's what's going on out there. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Awesome. Them. That was great. Yeah, so any restaurants out there that you're just watching um, Sam's uh, portion, let us know in the comments. What is what is your restaurant doing right now? Are you providing outdoor patio? What are you going to do with the fall and the winter season coming up? Are you going to provide incentives? Let us know. We'd love to hear what ideas you might be doing for the upcoming new normal the rest of 2020. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out here. So um, I'm going to transition us into YouTube, and we haven't talked a lot about YouTube in this presentation so far, but I think YouTube is one of those unforgotten platforms that has some really amazing results. And actually for our company at Global Social Media Marketing, our best results in any social media channel in 2020 have come from YouTube. So leave us a comment. Who out there is using YouTube to promote your business? If you're not promoting your business with YouTube, why not? We'd love to hear why you're not promoting on YouTube. So YouTube sells in 2020, right? These three numbers alone, if you can just look at these, they're pretty outstanding. 80% of people that watch YouTube videos now are watching them when they're buying products. It's the second most popular search engine only behind Google, which Google owns YouTube, and 73% of US adults use YouTube. So you know, I think these numbers are outstanding. I wanted to actually show an example of a video um, from YouTube that we just actually released yesterday. And again, to any of our Denver, Colorado people out there, that's where our company is based. That's our headquarters is in Denver, Colorado. Um, this is the Denver Startup Week pitch competition, a video submission that we just submitted yesterday. And Denver Startup Week, for any of those people that don't know, is actually the largest free entrepreneurial event in all of North America. They had over 20,000 attendees last year. And in this new normal, as most events are, they're going virtual, right? So when you think about the event industry and speakers, I definitely feel for that pain point. I've worked with a number of different people, specifically Peter Montoya, shout to him. If you haven't checked him out, he's doing some really cool things around leadership development and creating high performance teams. And one of the things that I realized working with speakers and in the event industry is that things are going to be virtual or most events are going to try to have some virtual version for the rest of the year. So Denver Startup, Startup Week pitch competition, they are actually going virtual for the first time in five years. And this is our pitch application that actually tries to sell our company for getting an investment in the startup scene. So def definitely check this out um, if you guys are in the startup space. We'll take a look. Our 2020 big idea is to be a low-risk YouTube ad service solution with a proprietary market search process. Most businesses can't afford professional videography services to create exciting content for their ads. So we've set up to become the best YouTube ads agency for any business to get in touch with online consumers. At Global, we have a dedicated YouTube department team with a multitude of professional backgrounds. Our YouTube experts have partnered with universities not only to create promotional videos, but also to take on the responsibility of generating new revenue streams through our video market research process. Our market research process uses popular keyword tools and other proprietary market insight strategies to match YouTube users with companies. We believe in our process so much that we have been sharing snippets of success in our free YouTube live webinars, podcast speaker engagement videos, training course playlists, and our new How to Become a YouTuber ebook published on Amazon. 
We work each day to promote educating business owners across the globe on how YouTube ads can grow their business and help them shine in the future. Right, so that's a, a quick one minute video. Our team was able to make that in less than a week. We do have an awesome YouTube director in Kyle McFarland. So he did actually make this video, but you know, I think the important thing is hopefully when you watch that video, right, it drives an emotion. And that's what I think we've kind of touched on in this presentation is that video is not going away. It's one of the most highest engaging um, types of content that you can use. And YouTube is a great place for that because people are actually going to search for your product or service and YouTube is gonna be able to come up in those search results. So how can you make your business stand out is making videos like this. If you're a speaker or if you're in the event space, do webinars, do um, interviews, do different types of things that you can create with video. And definitely in the startup world or the speaker world too, you're gonna to have to pitch your business, right? A lot of the applications that our company has done in 2020 have all called for YouTube URL links because it's easily accessible. So if you're not using YouTube, I think this is a great time for you to expand in that. And we've seen viewership and the number of videos really just explode in 2020. That's also correlated to sales because people have higher intent based on search instead of trying to do, be engaged in a community and conversation what we might see more on like a Facebook or an Instagram platform. So I wanted to show a quick example of our number one uh, sales campaign uh, results that we got with YouTube ads. This is actually for an e-commerce brand. You can see that we generated them almost $26,000 in revenue with a 6,000 plus ad spend. And guys, if you're watching this webinar, who wants these types of e-commerce product sales that you can get? Leave them in the comments below. Let us know. Say, hey, I want to get YouTube e-commerce sales like this. Or, hey, I don't know why I'm not using YouTube. Maybe I need to actually look into this now. So what is the secret sauce onto why we were able to get those explosive results? I kind of already mentioned it, right? We're in a webinar right now. If you're watching this, we can't have in-person events. Webinars have exploded. When I started the beginning of 2020, I did a keyword research on how many people are searching for webinar in the United States. That number was roughly around 20, 25,000 people per month. Since then, about two months ago, I discovered that there are now over 150,000 searches a month, guys, for webinars between Zoom webinars to software SaaS companies offering webinars on how to use their software or for speakers now needing to educate them and have a platform to speak, webinars are a great solution. So I wanna take a quick stop here and ask in this diagram to show you our webinar of sales funnel that we've run for other clients and for ourselves, what types of logos do you recognize from this webinar of sales funnel? I'll just pause here briefly. If you recognize any of these logos, please leave a comment below. Let us know if you recognize any of these logos. All right, so as those comments come in, I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of walk through these, right? So it all starts with the YouTube ad. That's kind of the beginning of the top of the funnel. And then we're kind of moving it and tracking it through using Google Analytics onto a landing page. There's definitely tons of different landing page options. We personally use WordPress because it's the number one content management system in the world. And that actually over 60% of all websites in the world are built on WordPress. We also have a number of different types of marketing technology tools that we use once we've actually driven somebody on the market research to be able to track them and drive them to a landing page. We're normally collecting leads, right? We're connecting their first name, their last name, their phone number, and their email, and maybe potentially where they're from or their industry. And then we're putting it into our CRM system. So Buck kind of mentioned that. There's tons of email marketing solutions out there. We personally use Go High Level because it was created by marketing agencies and we're gonna be trying to partner with them. Funny enough, we've also made some partnership videos for them and shout out to Sarah on getting that done over the summer so that we can partner and again, create value by collaborating with other businesses. These other options right here, we use Twilio and Mailgun to make sure that our emails are going out correctly and having the proper SMTP. We also make sure that Twilio is allowing us to provide text messages, right? With people being on their mobile phones, 
more than ever, it is a good idea to try to explore doing SMN text message campaigns. These other two, you probably recognize Gmail. Gmail is free. If you do have a business Gmail account, you will have to pay upwards of 50 to $100 a month. But we think that this is a great solution too because it gives you access to all of the G Suite features, right? Including YouTube, Google Sheets, Google Drive, the list goes on and on. And then Zapier, right? How do we send leads from a landing page into our CRM? That's what Zapier does. Just think of Zapier as a easy solution to integrate sending one action that triggers to another system and Zapier being the connection point in between those two. Once we've got the lead in our system, we're gonna reach out to them, right? We're gonna maybe potentially set up a, a call with them or something like that. We saw that Zoom exploded, right? We're actually doing this webinar on Zoom right now. Um, I think everybody might be a little Zoomed out at this point, but at the end of the day, it's what's relevant, it's exploded. They've adapted their technology during COVID, right? With the whole Zoom bombing and being more secure. And then these last two options down here at the bottom is actually getting it to a sales perspective, right? We use Elementor, which is a page builder within WordPress that drives people to potentially PayPal. On the note of PayPal, that's very well known, right? PayPal's been around for a while. A lot of small business owners use PayPal, but the cool option with PayPal too is that it's actually relevant for international business, right? We have a client where we were struggling, you know, with currency exchange rates or whatever. We immediately gave them a PayPal. It was done. So that's a good feature if you do have clients outside of the United States. And a lot of people are familiar with PayPal because it's been around for a while. So this is actually an example of the exact sales funnel that we ran at a conceptual level to get that $25,000 in revenue for that given client or to actually get that four times return on ad spend. So that kind of transitions me now into live streaming, right? We talked about Zoom and how Zoom is this new place for people to meet and to do webinars like this. But you know, thinking about once you are actually in the video conferencing tool, how can I live stream that information? And that's what we've done for Post From My Wall today for this webinar. I'm gonna get into that strategy on the following slide, but I always wanna start for free for all those people that, as to Sam's point, need value and they're looking to be more careful with how they spend their budgets and their money, here's a great option for free on how to live stream. This strategy is actually a strategy that I developed for TEDx Mile High earlier this year based in Denver on how they would be able to live stream their future events. And they do have their upcoming event that is also going to be virtual. So again, hitting on that trend where we're seeing the events, a lot of things going virtual, we definitely want to be able to offer a live stream option so that people can be engaged with the event and view it. Maybe if they're zoomed out or they prefer to access it on their mobile phone, where they're already connected on social media. So our approach for the strategy was to start with YouTube Live. We can then take that information, anything on YouTube, we actually download those videos as an MP4, and then we can upload it to other social media channels. We actually put it into a Facebook premiere that builds up. Think of that as like the movie space industry. You know, if you're gonna be releasing a short flick or something, right, you premiere it, right? Same concept there. If you have a really good video, maybe like, for example, with our Denver startup pitch competition video I just showed, we might wanna premiere that, build some excitement and actually gets released into a Facebook Live video. So this actually has all the same features that a Facebook Live video would have, except it builds up excitement prior. Actually then taking that video, we can download that video again from Facebook and turn it into a watch party. Watch parties were a huge trend that we saw in the music world, right? Everybody was doing live stream concerts. I know some people, shout out to one band, Spafford, they shred, they did a, a dive-in or a drive-in, right? We saw a lot of drive-in movie theaters now being used as concert spaces. But live streaming now as a musician is really very common. And I think the, the missing component that some people are missing with those live streams is inviting others to watch, right? inviting other brands, inviting other friends, having them engaged. And again, we can just repurpose this Facebook premiere and turn it into a watch party. From there, we can kind of distribute it on other channels. Again, we could download that, put it into an Instagram TV. We talked about that. You can even run ads on that. Then turning it into Instagram stories, right? We talked about how that's a huge trend with millions of people. It's the number one piece of content on Instagram. And then shout out to the other social media channels that we haven't discuss too much in today's presentation that you can all repurpose it. So this whole strategy guys is free. And what we did at Global 2 is we took each step of this and we would alter the video so that it's relevant for the given social media channel. So we would download the YouTube live, 
edit it a little bit or something more relevant for Facebook, and then just continue down that same path. So this is really just recycling your content and repurposing it for all of these different types of approaches or live stream features, starting with the YouTube live. So how did we do the live stream for this webinar? This was a really cool project um, that we innovated just in the last week. And I'm really proud of our team for coming together and Poster My Wall for helping us get to this point to be able to do this. And you can see that we actually are recording the webinar right through a video conferencing tool using Zoom. Everybody knows Zoom. And then there's an option where we can actually restream this Zoom broadcast that we're doing right now onto other social media platforms. And Restream what it does is it allows you to connect your different pages. So for today's webinar, we are actually right now in this moment streaming on the global YouTube page, the Facebook global page, the post from my wall Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, and the post from my wall YouTube. So we're streaming on five different places at once in different channels, all multi-streaming simultaneously live and we've co-branded it with Post From My Wall. So again, we're encouraging that collaboration and that partnership so that we can both reach new audiences and help each other both grow. And you can actually with Restream, stream up to 30 plus channels at once. That's crazy. Just to give you a price, I just showed you uh, the free approach for live streaming before this. It costs $89 for Restream. You will need a business Zoom account as well to be able to do the Restream feature and that's $79. But hey guys, I mean, $150, I know that sounds maybe a little bit expensive, but what if you can restream to 30 channels at once and save yourself maybe hundreds of hours in your live stream strategy for 2020? It might be a great investment if you can make that in your budget. And ultimately what that allows you to do is it allows you to reach a wider audience by streaming to multiple platforms at the same time. And also thinking about like what Post From My Wall and Global Social Media Marketing did to allow more of those collaborative live streams because there is an option sometimes with the tagging features on these networks to be able to co-brand a live stream and Restream and Zoom allow you to do that. So definitely um, thank you to the global team for helping us do that. And thank you for Post My Wall for you know, inviting us to do this webinar and being a part of creating this. So I wanna close just quickly with global. We didn't talk too much about my company. I am the CEO and founder of Global Social Media Marketing. This is a picture of me at the Intercom Conference last year when we were actually awarded a top 50 social media company in technology. So what is Global Social Media Marketing? Well, instead of explaining it as a business, I felt it was better to humanize our brand and show the people that make global company that it is today. And global is actually a social media growth solution for business. So I know we've covered a lot of interesting tactics in today's webinar, and maybe you're scratching your head and saying, Benjamin, Sam, Buck, these are all great things, but I'm a business owner. I'm struck for time. Time is of the essence. I don't know how to do all these things. I'm not savvy. That's where you hire a social media expert. And this is our team of social media experts. So you know that when you work with us, you're not just getting one person. You're actually getting a team of social media experts that can exponentially grow your business for the future in this new normal. Moving on to the next slide, why should you trust us versus anybody else? Well, number one, we have dedicated multilingual channel managers, meaning that we have a dedicated person for each social media channel. Instead of trying to have one person manage five different channels, right? We know as social media managers, there's a lot to do, a lot of different platforms, and it's really hard to manage all of those things so that's why we segment it on our team to have one person for one channel. We also have some strategic social media technology partnerships, as you can see here listed. We talked about ManyChat, CallRail, Supermetrics. Um, we also have proven results, guys. I mean, I showed you examples in these webinars. We have case studies. We've worked in over 30 different industries. This is really not an industry that we haven't worked in at this point. We're also a global company working in multiple uh, countries. And we actually focus on what matters to businesses, which normally what we found business owners is sales and leads to grow their business. We offer unlimited access to multi multimedia stock libraries, things such as, uh, you know, post from my wall, we're using that for our clients. We offer that as well, or story blocks and, and using those as creative ways for them not to feel stressed about having to make images or videos, but leveraging tools like post from my wall to offer those creative services for them. And finally, we're a cost-effective solution, guys. Average social media manager is going to make over $50,000 a year as a full-time employee. 
we're going to cut that cost in half and you're going to have not just one person, but you're going to have a team of experts with proprietary technology and resources, as well as our YouTube channel that has almost 200 training videos. If you want to do it yourself at global, we're about being transparent and empowering people to grow. We're not a marketing company that's going to send you a bill and not show you how to do it. We want to be there to guide you through the process and do everything we can to learn your business and help you grow in this new normal with social media. So to close with, how can global social media marketing help your business shine in 2020? Well, we talked a lot about the different social media channels today in today's webinar. We talked about Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube mainly. We do everything you can imagine on those channels. We also offer Google marketing options and education technology training, as well as expanding internationally. So if you're looking for someone to help you with content creation, to fan base growth, to generating leads and sales, we can do all of that. And we've got a team of experts hungry to get you those bolts. So at the end of this webinar, I want to take the time now to thank not only the speakers and Sam and Buck, I also want to take the time to thank Rick and Susie at Post From My Wall for inspiring me to help create this webinar, to help business owners all over the world. And as a token of our appreciation for the people that did watch the webinar and attended today or registered, we are going to give away our How to Become a YouTuber ebook on Amazon that's originally priced at $3.99 for free for a limited time. So I actually have the link in here and I've got Kyle and Anna on our team kind of monitoring the uh, live stream. So I'll make sure that they definitely leave a comment with that link. And you can just click on that link and it will take you to our landing page to then go to Amazon and get it for free. And that is for a limited time offer. We will teach you everything that we've done. It's got my experience of 10 years in YouTube marketing and also showing you those examples again of how YouTube sells in 2020 and why your business should be leveraging YouTube as the number two search engine in the world. So now I'm gonna close the end of the webinar now for a live Q&A. We're gonna um, stop the screen share here. If you have any questions for the panel or if you'd like to reach out to me after the webinar or the presentation to see about how we might potentially help you or even just to chat and see what's working for you in this new normal, I'd be happy to talk with you. I have my email listed. It's also on our website at globalsocialmediamarketing.com. And my email is benjamin.kepner at globalsocialmediamarketing.com. So I'm going to actually stop the share now. And I'm going to take a look in the comments and see if we have any comments that have come up um, and briefly stop here. So if you guys would like anybody that's in the Zoom or the live streams, I've got it open. Um, I think some of the other speakers do too. If you'd like to ask any other questions, um, go ahead and write those questions in the Zoom chat or the live streams and we'll try to answer them. And I did see just some comments too as we're waiting for some questions. Um, you know, we had a lot of different speakers. I saw people are using Post From My Wall for animations now and videos. Um, any questions from the audience? Now is the time for the speakers. They're here to here to help, here to answer any questions. No questions? Let's see if I have any on YouTube. Okay, guys. Well, if we've got no questions, then we'll end that the webinar early. Oh, here we go. Was this recorded? I had to step away to help with customers and miss some middle content. Yes, Lynette, this was recorded. We will send a replay of the webinar and it was also live streamed on social media. So you can feel free to, to watch it there if you're able to attend. We'll also be email blasting everybody that registered or RSVP'd. Any other questions? Awesome, Lynette. We'd love to hear that you that you saw what you heard. You enjoyed it. That's great. We will leave one more minute here just to see if there's any questions. Okay, guys. Well, if no questions, I'm going to end the webinar. Thanks again to Sam of Denver Union Station. Buck Sive of Drive Up Marketing, Rick and Susie of Push My Wall, and all the global team. I think we can say we successfully multi streamed simultaneously and helped a lot of business owners today. So thanks everyone for joining us. And please do feel free to reach out to us if there's any way we can help. Take care, guys. Thanks, Benjamin. Bye, guys.
Thank you.